Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is me, Ryan here, going, about, going to give you my final thoughts on Warframe. I've been playing this for about, I'd say 10 hours now, so I've got a kind of a good feel for it. I've I really enjoyed my experience. I think I will honestly keep playing this game. It's got a lot going for it. And I really, it's in open beta at the moment, so if you want to jump in, you can. A uh, little bit about Warframe. Warframe is a third person, free to play, shooter, co-op experience. And the one thing that I've enjoyed about it is that it appeals to the shooter in me, but it also appeals the shooter in me. That sounds like I'm going to go around and mass murder someone. That it appeals to the first person, to the shooting aspects of my gaming style, but it also appeals to a lot of the RPG elements because I think this game was highly based on, well, not highly based on RPGs, but it was inspired a lot by RPGs. There are a lot of systems in here that you will find in RPGs in RPG games, mainly from my own experience. I can say Diablo or Blizzard-based games wherein there are enemies who have who drop things and they do things and yeah i'll get into that a little bit later but the game is called warframe for the sake of these guys these are your warframes oh and i should also point out this is a very pretty game like i think i pointed that out in my noob adventures but it's a very very pretty game i've got i'm running a nvidia gtx 670 and this game will easily run on about 200 frames per second and i've got everything on maximum detail i'm playing on 1080p I'm playing 1080p, playing borderless full screen at the moment. I've got anti-aliasing, HDRs, high local reflections, depth of field and motion blur, which everyone hates motion blur. There's bloom, there's physics on, for crying out loud. And the game runs beautifully. So I think that all comes down to the way that it's designed. There's a lot of normal maps into this game, and normal maps don't really chew up much of your system's resources, but they look damn pretty. So here we go. As you can see, this is my, just while I'm here, normal maps. All that pretty detail on his back, that's all normal maps. Anyway, this is Warframe. Name so for the sake of these guys, these are Warframes. Warframes are the characters, you I guess you could call them, that you play as, which are, they kind of, they all have different abilities. So I think it would be safe to say that they are kind of like the different roles within a role-playing game. They all have different abilities, which means you can really pick one that plays to your style, I assumedly, and you get to different crap like this is Excalibur he's one of the starting ones I picked him because at the beginning of the game I was like I'm new to this game and it kind of gave me a recommendation it gives you three that you can pick from which are Excalibur Loki and Mag I believe they all have different abilities and different health and stuff um it recommended Excalibur as new to starting players new people who are new to Warframe and I was like I'm new to Warframe I'll give Excalibur a shot I kind of regret it to be honest Excalibur's a little bit boring but he's a good all-rounder so if you want to start playing this game, that's really up to you. Uh, however, you do get to play as Excalibur during the tutorial, so unless you really want to kind of reach out a little bit and try a character who you don't haven't actually played before on account of not trying them through the tutorial, you're gonna, probably going to end up with Excalibur, and you'll realize that 90% of the players online play as Excalibur. Anyway, uh, yeah, different abilities. There, are, I assume they have different play styles. Like, I know that there is one called Rhino, who I know is a tanking sort of unit. I'm not sure about his abilities. He may have taunts and stuff. I do know that one of them is one of his abilities is like he becomes, I think, like invincible or impervious to damage or something stupid like that. Uh, there is one called Trinity. I know she is a healer. She has a lot of abilities which are based on um, putting things on enemies, and when people damage that enemy, they heal for that amount or and it jumps around and heals your teammates which is kind of nice uh, but other than that this game really does play out like a shooter you can just stand back and shoot if you're not really interested in like using abilities and stuff for the greater part you can play the game without abilities and you'll be fine I save my abilities for when I desperately need them or for the greater part I only use slash dash which basically launches him forward and kills everything in the way I'll only ever use that if I'm fully surrounded or if I just see an opportunity where there's about five or six enemies in the line and I'm like yep let's kill them all uh, anyway this is Warframe. Now, earlier I said you may, you should theoretically be able to pick other Warframes, but that's mainly because you will be stuck with your starting Warframe forever. Uh, you can buy other Warframes with either real-world money, which, to be honest, the conversion rate's a little bit crap, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, but you can also build them using in-game materials and in-game currency. Uh, that will take you forever, though, to be honest, because I've been playing this for like I said like nearly 10 hours which is quite a decent time investment for like every single player games will be over in 10 hours most of the time most single player games you get on consoles and whatnot will only last you anywhere between 7 to 12 hours so I mean 10 hours in a kind of this sort of environment and I haven't got anything to really show for it is a little bit disappointing but oh well anyway uh, 
Warframe, you pick a Warframe, you go into a mission, you can drop in and drop out, which is really cool. Uh, you have your weapons, you have this kind of stuff. The cool thing, if you watch my Noob Adventures, is you'll realize that the gameplay is very flowy. Um, it's based around a lot of quick movements and quick actions. Well, I say quick actions, but it's a very fast-paced gameplay. You switch between your primary and secondary weapon, as you would in any other game, but you also have melee built in. Now, this isn't like other games in the sense that you have to switch to the melee weapon and then attack with it. It's literally, you just press a melee button, your character pulls out a sword, and you can do different stuff with your sword. Rather cool little feature that I've found is that they've implemented a whole bunch of stuff to do with like a stamina bar that you have in the game. That allows you to sprint, obviously, as other games have, but it also allows you to do cool crap like wall run, you can do backflips, you can... Uh, there's a whole bunch of little combo moves you can do, like if you sprint at someone, jump and then hold crouch in midair, you can kick enemies in the face, knock them on the ground, and then you can run up to them, press E, and stab them through the chest with a sword to instantly kill them. That kind of stuff is really cool. But, uh, while I'm here, RPG elements. RPG elements include, um, these things. These are mods. Mods are acquired through killing enemies. They're just randomly dropped off of enemies, which is kind of cool. Uh, enemies have certain percentages to drop them. As you can see, if you can see me flicking through the bottom there, that one is common, this one is uncommon, this one is rare, so you have different rarities, there you go, rare, again. And what you do is you equip them to your Warframe. Now, your Warframes and your weapons all have ranks, and the more you use any particular thing, the higher rank they get. Like, for example, here you can see my Warframe is rank 24, my machine gun is rank 22, my pistol is rank 18, and my sword is rank 15. Um, with these ranks, you unlock mod capacity, and your mod capacity is exactly the same as your rank. So I'm rank 24, I have 24 mod capacity. Along each of these things, you can see little numbers to the right of them. That is how much mod capacity it costs to install. So obviously, the more you use a certain weapon or a certain Warframe, the higher level it gets. And then you can equip more mods and stuff to it, to the point where I think you can get them up to like level 60 or something redonkle like that. Uh, you, there's a quite a bit of customization. It's all based on how your playstyle. For me, I know I like to sit back and pick enemies off from a distance, and I'm also a very cover-based person, so I figured for me I would go for higher shield capacity and quicker shield recharge rate. That way if my shield gets dropped down, I can quickly duck behind cover and let it recharge and then pop back into the action. I've got the Warframe's health just as a extra, I guess, in case my shield gets too low and I don't really have enough time to evacuate, I can kind of give myself that extra pinch of time. Uh, this one just cost two to install, so I was like, why not? And this is his ability, Slash Dash. Uh, while you do have war Warframe specific kind of mods which will only go on, which will go on any Warframe, I kind of mess that up. You ha also have these Warframe specific mods which will only go on specific Warframes and it's their abilities. You'll only have the abilities that you have equipped. So for example, I've only got Slash Dash. Out of all of Excalibur's abilities, that was the only one I found myself using, which is the one I described earlier where you press it and you slice through multiple enemies. Uh, there are other ones, I can drop them in there if I want, like for example I've got Radial Javelin here, which is probably the only other one I would ever use. There is a little bit of a trick to the customization, namely in Polarity, I believe it's called. I did a tiny bit of research towards that, so, and that is, while you see this cost 12 to install, up in the top right corner, I wish I could show you with my mouth, with my mouse, but, <laughs> with my mouth, I wish I could show you with my mouse, but if I hover up there it'll disappear. Uh, but if you can see in the top right corner of this icon it's got like two little claw looking swishy marks. You'll also see them up here. If I drop this in there, half price baby. There we go, that mod's installed for half price. I might actually keep that there just because I had the space to put it in and I didn't. You can fill these up as much as you want. Um, one little caveat that I discovered, which I'll quickly drag that out so I can show you. Fast deflection. I have fast deflection here. I have fast deflection down here. That's 15% shield recharge. That's 45% shield, re shield recharge. Can't have two of the same mod equipped. Why is that? Because the game has an upgrade system. Uh, if you find yourself with a mod that you quite like, you can go into... I'll quickly install this so I can show you. Ah, take me back. Mods. You can upgrade your mods. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward system. You click a mod that you want to upgrade. You go, Fusion! And then you click mods that you don't want. So, for example, click, 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 click. You can see them flashing with red. And also down along here, you can see this little bar going red. As this fills up, it increases the... I'm obviously not going to fuse this for anyone watching this video going, What are you fusing Hellfire for? I only just picked it up. But as you can see, click this kind of stuff. And ping, you heard the little noise. That's now ranked up to 60 shield recharge. 
60% shield recharge rate, and that is ranked up to grade 3, which is also increased, increased, increased the cost by 1. So that's how you increase mods, that's how mods work. Mods pretty straightforward, you get them for everything. Those are all my Warframe specific ones, you can get them for your individual weapons. I should really install Hellfire, but I'll do that a little bit later just to save time in the video. Uh, all your weapons do that. You can change your weapons. You do have an, There is a nice selection of weapons, but for the greater part you'll be stuck with the same weapons for the aforementioned reason of you can either build them yourself, in which case they take quite a while to build, or you can buy them with real world currency, which I'll get into a little bit later. You can also buy them with in-game currency, which honestly doesn't take that long to acquire once you get into higher levels. This one's like 15,000, that one's like... If you're playing low level missions, you're getting like 1,000 at the end of them. If you're playing like, I'd say high level, but they're high level for me. If I finish, which I'm guessing are like low to mid range missions, you get like 10,000 for finishing them. So yeah, buying crap like 75,000 is nothing. So that would be fine. You'd After a while, after a decent amount of gameplay time, you'd have different weapons, but for the greater part, you'd be stuck with basic weapons. I've got this bow, which is a fun little mechanic. It's a little bit of a gimmick to be honest, but it's still really cool. It's the typical bow, what you see in nearly every single game, which is like the perfect ideal stealth main weapon. And it's capable of one shot killing people. In this game, there is also a stealth, ele a stealth element. You can stealthily kill enemies. The AI is kind of smart in the sense that if they see you in a place where you're not meant to be, they will lock down that sector and they will call in reinforcements and alert the ship that you're there. If you take out the entire ship stealth, I don't know what the benefit is. I've never done it. It's quite damn hard to do. Uh, the bow is kind of gimmicky, but it's really fun. But for now, I'll stick with the assault rifle just because there are people who want to see what this game looks like and what my opinions on it are. There's a tiny bit of customization as far as the Warframes go. Uh, for me, I bought a color pack mainly because the standard colors you get are these ones straight down the middle And that might seem like a decent amount, but it really isn't the these color packs uh, They cost exactly five US dollars. It costs 75 It costs 75 platinum and 75 platinum costs exactly five dollars US to get you can buy exactly 75 platinum but I bought this color pack to one give it get a feel for the conversion rate and kind of too because I'm vain. I like having my color customization. You can customize quite a bit. Oh, you can customize a bit. There's yeah, you can kind of see what that's doing. Uh, you can also customize the color of your weapons. While that's kind of menial and doesn't really do much to be honest. Hang on. I like to change the color of this because it's still my old colors. Yeah, you can change the color of your guns and whatnot. It's kind of menial. You won't notice it for the greater part to be honest, but it's, it's just a nice little touch. I feel like as a role-playing game player that yeah that didn't really make sense i feel like as someone who grew up on role-playing games that the customization is a little bit disappointing as far as the warframe goes i would hope i would jump into this game really hoping you could customize the heck out of your warframe but you can't it's the game is based a lot on the warframes are all very unique and very individual in their style they have a very distinct silhouette so from a distance you can tell which warframe someone is using if you've had enough experience to know that kind of stuff and it kind of comes down to the fact that if you changed up the shape of your Warframe too much, people wouldn't be able to identify you at a glance. And, yeah. So I feel like that's a little bit disappointing. You can, however, change the helmet, but it is a vanity item, so you do have to pay actual real-world money for it. And I think, once again, it's like 75 Platinum, so that'll be 5 US dollars for you to get a new helmet. Yeah, that's a little bit disappointing. If you find yourself in excess of mods from bosses and enemies, you can sell them. Alright, I'll jump into... Uh, there is a clan system that I would really like to go into, but I'm sorry guys, I can't really show you it. I joined a random clan in the hope that I could kind of have a look at this and have a clan experience just while I was playing, but there's no one online. I'm not sure if that's like something to do with the clan itself or just the fact that I'm on a terrible time. But there is a clan dojo which was implemented in the last patch, which I believe was a place for clans to hang out. I don't actually know what it is. Anyway. Uh, within the game, after you finish missions and stuff, you get credits, you get materials, blah 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 blah. You can go to the mar market. The market has everything you can buy within the game. So you can buy bundles, bundles have all kinds of stuff. Uh, there is a little bit of a caveat with the... Ca Why does it sound like I'm saying caveat? There's a little bit of a caveat with the pricing though, because it's a little bit ridiculous to be honest. There's... As you can see, these are different Warframes. The Warframes are all kind of unique and they do look really cool, to be honest. If you see some of them in the game, you're just like, oh, you look awesome. They're really well designed. They look really sexy. But these are the different Warframes. They are constantly adding more. I think I just logged on recently and this guy was here, Vorbin. There are going to be people in the future looking at this like, huh, Vorbin, he's so old school. There's like 50 Warframes now, but still. 
uh, this is the selection of Warframes. As you can see down the bottom here, it says 225 Platinum. Platinum is a lit Platinum is the in-game currency you use where you purchase it with real world currency. And I'm going to be honest, it's a little bit ridiculous on the conversion rate. It's I, I bought five US dollars worth of which is 75 platinum, which is the minimum amount you can buy. I'm from New Zealand, so that five dollars US transferred into like six or seven dollars New Zealand, which is like a meal from McDonald's. So I guess it's not really that much of a thing to toss up, but it's uh, given I was, I was I, for five five dollars US. I bought a color pack, which is what unlocked all of those colors for me. Like, I'll jump in here, there are different color packs. Let's jump here, different color packs. As you can see, classic, classic, saturated, storm, fire, ice, smoke. All right, um, most of these colors are locked off. For the greater part, you, when you start off, you only have access to the center column that I'm going down right now. You only have access to those in the classic. If I want to get into classic saturated, as you can see, they're all locked. If I want to purchase this color pack, it costs 75 platinum. 75 platinum is five US dollars. Five US dollars, it's a vanity item. So I'm okay with paying real world money for vanity items in a game. That's fine with me. Like paying for an advantage, that's not fine with me, but paying for vanity items, that's cool with me. But I have to say $5 for just the, the option to change your colors is a little bit crazy, but that was my own choice. There are other things I could have bought with it. But with that said, I'm saying but a lot. With that said, there is a huge markup on some of the stuff like the prices for platinum that you can get you can get five dollars five dollars us will get you 75 platinum which is enough to buy some basic warframes vault you can get loki you can get you can get vault and loki i believe you can get excalibur and that will get you crap like let's find it here i believe you can buy vanity helmets there you go 75 um platinum to buy vanity helmets these are the alternative helmets for the different warframes so that's five dollars for a helmet alone five dollars for some of you may not be a huge investment but for me it kind of is i'm the reason why i play free to play games is because well they're free to play if i feel it's a good game i will support the developer happily but there is also a limit to the point where i'm not going to dish out forty dollars just to get a helmet and i know they're not asking forty dollars for a helmet but five dollars is still a little bit extreme it's free to play it's a good game i really do want to support the developers but I might at some point buy another 75 Platinum so I can buy a Vanity Helmet for myself. But that will only be once I unlock one of these higher end Warframes that it's actually worth getting it for. Because, yeah, it's a little bit, that's a little bit steep for me. I don't know how you feel about it, but that's fine for me. I'll go over some of the prices just so you can get a feel for it. 75, that's 5 US dollars. There is a next, the next step up is you can get 170 Platinum for 10 US dollars. Now that's not that's an extra 20 on top of what you'd get just for just buying the $5 pack. But for 170, you still can't get that much. You, they give you 50 to start with, which I may only be a beta promotion, so I'm not sure about that. But that'll get you Mag, who's one of the starting Warframes. Uh, I believe 170 plus the 50 that you get will have you five points short of buying the like weapons. These are 225 each. Oh, there we go. There's another thing you can buy for $5. You can buy a pistol. You can buy a pistol for $5. Uh, 170 won't really get you much. They'll get you two of the 75 items, really. I think everything else just barely out of reach. Like, even with the 50 that you get, if you buy 170, you'll have 220, which means you're five points short of being able to buy anything interesting, like Ember, for example, or some of these weapons, which are 225. You can buy some of the weapons for 170, but, yeah. Now, the next logical step up from $10, you would assume, would be 20 or 15, maybe. Nope, it's $30. 30 US dollars will get you 5700, oh, 5700, 570 platinum. 570 platinum will get you access to near anything, really. You can buy any Warframe here, but that also comes at the trade-off of you don't know what any of these Warframes are like. You might not like their playstyle, but once you've bought them, you're stuck with them. You can't trial them, that's a little bit disappointing. I would like to try some of the other Warframes, even if they only give me like a one hour trial them once. That would be fine with me. Like That would at least give me the option to try them all before I decide to make any investments and that would also be good on the game developers behalf because that means if people start getting bored with the game i guess like even for myself if i had the opportunity to play as any of the other warframes i might be inclined to buy 570 platinum so i can try one of the other warframes uh you can also buy crap like vanity items and stuff with platinum you can buy skins for weapons which i have to admit is pretty cool you can get them for 75 platinum so that's five dollars for a skin which i guess is isn't really that bad given that like league of legends and stuff was it league of legends I believe it was. I never played it, to be honest, but I knew one of those MOBA games had a system where you could buy skins for, like, five bucks. 
but yeah the there are also some other crazier options for if you really 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 want to support the developers you can get a thousand platinum for 50 us dollars you can get 2100 platinum and a few mods for 100 us dollars or you can get 4300 platinum and three rare mods for 200 us dollars that's if you really want to i to be honest wouldn't really recommend it it's a good game support the developers if you can uh but yeah that's a little bit ridiculous i think i'd rather pay like twenty dollars for this game and have everything kind of unlocked progressively as i played instead of having to grind for hours on end but i've gone over the platinum you can actually buy a majority of this stuff within the game like here you can see there were all the warframes here are all the blueprints blueprints are the crafting system to craft something you need to have the blueprints and then you need to have the materials the materials are dropped from enemies within the game so sometimes it will require a little bit of farming to get all the materials but yeah you can make warframes you can make all of your weapons and whatnot there you go weapons there's a lot of weapons to pick from and they're all very different as far as i know they all play fairly differently uh yeah so you can craft your own stuff but it will take a lot of time and a lot of investment like a lot of game time investment and a little bit of cash but yeah you can make nearly anything so on the bright side at least you're not paying to win like you can't you can't pay for real you can't pay real world cash to instantly get these access to these warframes and those weapons but for the greater part you can make them if you're free to play as well which is cool i i applaud that it's always good to have that paying for advantages is always a little bit cheap but so long as it's available to everyone it's fine i'm fine with it they're not limiting access just based on the fact that you don't want to or you can't afford to support the developers that's why i'm fine with vanity items costing money anyway that covers pretty much the menu i'll try not to spend too long here i got morphix oh my gosh i must have done this in the last time in my last like recording and not realized but here's a good opportunity to show you how it works i got a little bit excited about that sorry about that uh here we go this is the foundry foundry is where you craft all of your items along here you can see all of the crap i've picked up along the way it just kind of gathers up you don't really pay attention to it once that much until you need something like for example i needed morphix to make half of this crap uh it's got the list here these are the blueprints the things i can make it's all pretty cool and yeah you buy the blueprints or you can find them as drops off of enemies enemies will drop blueprints which is pretty cool but it's really rare so anyway uh these are blueprints to make them all you really need is you need the blueprint itself and you need the materials required to make it as you can see here the ones highlighted in green i have the materials to make them the ones highlighted in red i don't have the materials to make them and rather nicely it tells me what i need left to make it tells me what i have left to make it um yeah so it really is as simple as once you've got all the materials click build down the bottom here it tells you how much it'll cost you and how long it'll take for the greater part these take 12 hours there may be things that take longer i'm not sure if you really don't want to sit around and wait 12 hours you can click build and then for a small amount of platinum you can speed up the production so that it's finished instantly uh i haven't tried that but i assume it works pretty much exactly as advertised so while i'm here i have the money and the resources to make the cronus which is a longsword which i've heard lots of good things about i could make the banshee chassis but oh yes this is also one other thing in the marketplace you may have noticed that there were blueprints for warframes it's a little bit misleading in the sense that there was one there for one called the rhino as you can see here i have the rhino chassis and rhino systems when you buy the blueprints for the rhino as far as i know it asks you to provide the chassis the systems and the head and those are the blueprints for those are all drops off of enemies like rare drops i believe and you need to craft those before you can craft the actual warframe itself so building a warframe will require luck as well as quite a bit of farming to get the materials needed if i had the rhino heads blueprint i would definitely probably try i would definitely try and make it because i'm just i want to try them out and but yeah as i said i've dipped like 10 hours into this game and that i don't really have anything to show for it but here we go we'll click build just because we can yes i want to build the cronus and ting 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 or bzz, bzz, however it goes finish now 25 platinum and yeah you click rush and i believe it finishes it instantly for 25 platinum which 25 platinum not much to ask to be honest you get given 50 to begin with and although now that i'm looking at i've got the other page for the buy platinum open up on the other screen so i guess 25 platinum is about a dollar 20 so not that bad dollar 20 in the scale of things but yeah dollar 20 for a quick weapon why not but anyway that's that that's pretty much the game 
covered. That's pretty much the menus and stuff covered. So I'll jump into gameplay here. I'll try not to mess around too much. Uh, I need Morphic, so I might as well jump into Mercury. There are bosses in this game, but I have to say they're a tiny bit disappointing. Uh, I've only versed like two of them so far, so they could be a little bit better as the game goes on, but there's nothing too interesting at this point. I'll jump into this one. This is a boss. It's got a drop-in, drop-out co-op system, which is really cool. So you can drop in and drop out of missions at any point in time. As you can see here, it's got like little ones and stuff next to it. That means how many squads are on that particular mission, or I believe it's squads. So if I click this, it'll try and attach me to the squad. But there is also a little bit of an updating issue apparently with the game. I'm not sure if that's just on my end because I'm in New Zealand, so there's a little bit of latency issue, but there we go. There we go, it joined us to the game. Anyway, this is Warframe. Warframe is a really, really pretty game. Um, I'll try and show you a bit of the mechanics, a little bit of the gameplay. Well, oh, gameplay obviously, but I'll try and show you the mechanics. Um, as you can see, really, really pretty. My frame rates decide to tank a little bit, I'm not sure why to be honest. Go storage locker. Go, go, storage locker. I think this game is lagging for me a bit. Not, like, actual computer. I think it's my, like, network. Uh, as you can see, you can slide and stuff. It's actually a really cool mechanic. They have moved, implemented fast movement as part of, like, quite integral to gameplay. As I was explaining before, you can, like, slide kick people over and do all kinds of cool crap. There's even, like, little things like that. You may not have heard that. That was the sound of my sword tinging against the ground as I, like rolled. See if you can hear it this time. Yeah, I'm not sure if you could hear that. That's really cool. That's impressive to me. Little details like that are really cool. As I was saying, here we go. Both of these guys are playing as Exc Excalibur. Nearly everyone plays as Excalibur. And it sounds like we have enemies. Or my teammates just being a moron and shooting at nothing. Alright, let's speed this up. Alright. So as you can see, as I'm shooting enemies, there's little numbers popping off. Once again, one of those RPG sort of elements that was implemented. You can kind of visibly see how much damage you're doing and number crunch how much damage per second you're doing and whatnot. Uh, I found myself like I quite enjoyed that because I play a lot of um, I play a lot of RPGs. Like I play World of Warcraft and number crunching and trying to figure out how to get maximum DPS is like actually quite fun for me. I'm a big PVE person. I'm not very big on PvP, so I found that kind of cool. They also have these tiny little challenges. I'm not sure how the challenges work, to be entirely honest, but they seem to just pop up, and I think they give you bonus credits or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. Sorry if I randomly start, like, stop... If I randomly start, stop talking. If I randomly stop talking, it's because this is one of those games that I need to focus on what I'm doing. Otherwise, I have a tendency to, like, die and do stupid crap. And it's hard for me to... It's hard for me to prioritize talking over not dying. It's just instinctual. Unless I'm specifically talking to someone, in which case they respond to me and stop me from breaking my patterns of thought, so I don't end up saying random crap over and over again. But yeah. Anyway, Warframe. Very pretty game. Uh, as you can see, the game's got a lot of fast-paced mechanics, and that's namely based around sliding and wall running, so you can slide back and forth between cover. If anyone of you ever saw the game Vanquish once upon a time... He needs... Oh, damn it. We got locked out. Um, Vanquish was a Xbox game, I believe it was on PS3 and whatnot, I think it was on a few platforms, but it was toted as, if you ever watched the trailers or played the game itself, you'd notice that this mechanic seems quite familiar. The game was based a lot around sliding, dashing behind cover and sliding in and out behind cover. And that this game kind of shares that quality. You can play it very tactically and you can kind of stay behind cover and do what you want, or you kind of can just bum rush in and kill things. Which is always fun, like so. There we go. That was the ability. That was one of the abilities you can use. As I said, all the Warframes have different abilities, so you can kind of pick whatever you want, but for me, that ability does what I need it to do. It just slaughters things in a line, so it's fun for me. There is a variety of enemies across all the um, across all the maps and whatnot. As I was saying in my Noob Adventures, I hope that there were was more variety, and there is a decent amount of variety. Um, they just have a they don't kind of throw everything at you at once, which is one thing that I thought they might do. As you progress further on in the missions, there will be more and more different varieties of enemies. I believe those guys are bugged out a little bit. Yep, he was bugged out a little bit. There are still a few little bugs with this game, and it is still an open beta. People are still testing it. So you will have run into the occasional bug if you're playing it at this point in time. Alright, let's just slice these guys up to make sure they're actually dead. 
Yep, he's actually dead. See, that was cool. That's, really? That's cool. That's something I'd never noticed. The body actually stops the laser. The laser isn't just like a 2D image plane grafted onto nothing. Hey. Also, uh, one thing I pointed out in the Noob Adventures as well, it feels like enemies spawn on top of you. I swear they do. I th they may, like, spawn in from different areas and, like, walk into the zone, but it sometimes just feels like they drop on top of you. Like, you'll be totally alone, you'll clear an area out, you'll turn around, go to walk back through the area, and there will be enemies there. So, that does get a little bit frustrating. But for the greater part, it's alright. Uh, this mission's objective is to destroy these cores, apparently. Uh, there are different objectives and different missions to do. There are escort missions, there are just kill everything in sight missions, there are steal things from your enemies missions. There's all kinds of cool stuff to do. My computer's lagging a tiny bit, so it's a little bit hard for me to do this stuff. Yeah, um, anyway, enemies. As I was looking at that little drone, it reminded me what my train of thought was. There are a variety of enemies, and there are some quite cool looking enemies occasionally. You do get some really cool looking stuff. Like these guys. It's, but for the greater part, I have to be honest, it is mostly just shoot at brain dead enemies until they kind of die. The bosses themselves aren't particularly impressive, to be honest, either. The boss is kind of adequate, they kind of just, they have more health, they do more damage, they have a few special attacks but nothing over the top or nothing overly interesting to be honest. So it's a little bit disappointing in that aspect, but I guess I've only versed two bosses so it could get more interesting as we go. Uh, yeah, this is the starting machine gun that I'm using. As I said, you will be stuck with the same weapons for quite a while. If there's enough time, I will jump into one more game and I'll use the bow just to show you. But I get the feeling this video might be running on a little while now, so I'll probably have to cut it short. There's an enemy standing in front of the grate waiting for me to slice at him. But yeah. Uh, the gameplay's the gameplay is really fluid. The gunplay is really fluid. The enemies could stand to be either a little bit more interesting or a little bit smarter, I guess. For the greater part, they do kind of just stand there. Which also brings up one of my other things of the enemies have a tendency, or the AI with the escort missions in particular have a tendency to stand around. Now, we haven't seen one of these, so I'll quickly point it out after I kill this guy. That is an item drop. No, go away. Go away. I'm going to load you up with bullets. Anyway, that is an item drop. You can point it out to all your teammates. It's individual to everyone. If an enemy drops it, everyone will see it. Everyone will have their own. They all have to run over and pick it up to grab it. There we go. I'll pick it up. I will pick it up. There we go. And I do that, so if any of my teammates are around, they see that, they know there's a pickup there so they can grab it. Or you can put a waypoint down, in which case all your teammates will see the waypoint and they'll be like, ooh, that's pretty. Now my frame rate has tanked a little bit outside, I guess it's because of all the bloom. But yeah. So yeah, that's how drops kind of work. I'm going to kill these guys just because. There's that depth of field. That's beautiful. I love that. That's really good looking. My teammates are waiting for me to finish the mission, I'm kind of just standing here killing enemies. And that's the mission over. Once we blow up that core, it was kind of just get to the extraction point. At the end, it gives you a little bit of a cash reward, it tells you what items you picked up. I only picked up one item, which is a little bit disappointing. Most uh, most missions you'll pick up about anywhere between two to six items. So one item's a little bit disappointing, but then again I dropped in about halfway through and I was kind of screwing around. Um. So that pretty much covers Warframe. I probably will be playing this game a little bit more, so I may upload a little bit of videos later on, which is just me screwing around playing the game. If you want to see more gameplay videos, I will probably upload one afterwards, but I wanted to keep this video kind of prompt and a little bit shorter than my usual. I'm not sure how long it's been running on at the moment, sorry. So I'll have to get back to you on that one. I actually quickly leave this group before we start a mission without my consent. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a great game overall. I would recommend downloading it. It's free to play, so even if you you haven't really lost anything except maybe a bit of bandwidth. Uh, it's a good game. If you want to play, feel free to contact me. I'm using the same username I use for freaking everything, Sefer. If you ever want to find me on any game ever, just look Sefer, and if the name doesn't show up, I'm not playing it. And if I'm not playing it and you want me to play it or you think it's a good game, hit me up. Um, either via YouTube or something. I don't think I'm important enough to warrant a Facebook page or a Twitter account yet, so... Oh well. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's Warframe. I'd recommend downloading it. It's actually quite a good game. Uh, hit me up. Let's play it. I need some people to play with. I'm getting sick of playing stuff either by myself or with total randoms. I'd like to have people to talk to. Uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, please like. It'd be really helpful. It would be really nice. 
and I'll try to subscribe. I'll try to keep this content coming on a regular basis unless I'm just like overly busy with actual real life because, you know, real life is real life. I'm still studying. So, yeah. Uh, thank you and enjoy. I'll see you next time when I review whatever I'm reviewing or play whatever I'm playing. Bye.